السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers, my colleagues, I am very, very fortunate and happy to be here for this eighth national imams refresher course that is taking place here in this beautiful center in Harare in Zimbabwe. Many of you are known to me. I see many faces that I recognize, mashallah. Few are my colleagues, few are my students. More importantly, we are all brothers. Today I want to remind myself, more than anyone else, being an imam as well, of the most important factors regarding how to deal with the congregations and the communities of today. We take cue from none other than Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No matter how much the world will change and evolve, the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not change. The first thing we have been taught by him is something known as al-ikhlasu fil amal. When we work, we work for Allah. When we do something, we do it for the pleasure of Allah. Wallahi, my beloved brothers, when you do for the sake of Allah, the little that you get in return is multiplied in barakah and blessings. You may not have so much of money, people think you are rich. Because you give, because you help, because you go out, because you are always there. So Allah gives you blessings in your children, in your family members. Allah Almighty protects you from harm that you may not know. Perhaps you have better health than others, but that is barakah. Whereas there are others who earn much more than you and I, but much of their wealth is wasted in things, and there is no barakah or blessings in that wealth. So to do things for the sake of Allah, people will fault you, they will doubt you, they will say things about you, remember you are not doing it for them. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. I do good not because I think you deserve my good, but I know Allah loves those who do good. That's why I am doing good. So whether you like me or you don't like me, as long as I did good, Allah loves me. I don't care about your love or not. Subhanallah. That is an imam. You will lead salah. They will still make noise about you. It's natural. You will not be paid much. The imams are hardly paid. Today I was looking at some of the chat groups that I am on and I removed myself from most of them because of time. And people were complaining about how low imams are paid. And in my mind I am thinking, Allah blesses you with barakah. Then when the imam tries to have a side tuck shop, they say this man is now turning towards the dunya, you see. But the dunya is halal for them, not for us. <laughs> Don't let your job that is on, on, on the side take the main center stage. But it is not prohibited to earn a living for you and for me. For as long as it is not affecting the primary work. Another factor you find people will always complain. This imam is like that, he's like that. If you are in communities that are wealthier, perhaps they might want to control you totally, completely and totally. Reading too slow, reading too fast, doing this, doing that. All of that is for Allah to test your ikhlas. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We have tested all those before you in order to distinguish who is truthful and who is lying. You love Allah, you are working for Allah. You are an imam in the masjid. Allah says, hang on. For you is Jannah and the Akhirah. As for the dunya, it is not necessarily for you. If we want, we can throw it at your feet. But... It will also come with challenges, with tests, with so much more. 
But that is Allah. He's going to test you and I. Then in the Akhirah, how will we earn Jannatul Firdaus? Only by the mercy of Allah. When you do for Allah, my brothers, let me explain something to you. When you do something for Allah, it is important to love those around you because even if they don't like you, you will not have an impact on people if you don't care for them and love them, no matter how much they have hurt you. I take cue from my own father, Sheikh Musa. You know him. No matter how much they attacked him, no matter what they said about him, you might know examples. No matter how evil they were, he tried to help, he continued to assist, he continued to well wish. He, that's why there is success. Otherwise, a leader cannot have hatred in his heart for people whom, Wallahi, the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Allah, they don't know. If they knew, they would not do what they are doing here. They don't know. These are my children. These are my people. This is the ummah I'm trying to call. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked in ta'if to say whatever he wants and the angels would execute, you know what he said? Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain to you my weakness. You asked me to deliver the message I'm delivering. They are not listening. Subhanallah rabbil alameen. How many of us, if people don't listen, we, we complain about ourselves. I'm weak. But it's from Allah. Continue to work for Allah. One day they will understand. One day they will come. I also face many challenges as I work. But for every one, there are another hundred or a thousand who will benefit. Don't worry. You don't do it for the people. They will judge you because the world is full of judging. You continue to work. Think, how can I get the message to everyone? I came here on my own. I put up this tripod in front of me. I have my own phone, which I put up here. I rigged up my own recording. I am recording this myself. And I have a channel, which I started to use some years ago. Put it up on my own. And people think you have a thousand people working for you doing things. And they don't realize we are Zimbabweans <laughs> to begin with. Allah will grant it its acceptance if it is meant. And Allah will throw you out if he wants. It's not them. It's Allah. So use the platforms. There is so much you can use. You might sit here in this country and reach people in Australia and wherever else because today Allah brought it to you. I remember there was a time when I used to sometimes hear people say, no, you know, there is always politics between some organizations and some masjids. That is not for us. For you and me, we don't want to believe in the politics. They are all our brothers. We will help everyone, no matter who they are. For as long as they are Muslimin, shahada Allah, ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah, you need to be above the difference. They are your brothers. You will reach them because the idea, if you don't have a good rapport with them, how will you get the message of the deen to them and their children? How? So never mind the politics. They say this one is like this, that one is like that. Just keep smiling and walking. Just do your work. It's okay. It's okay. Salamu alaikum. How are you? Everything okay? Mashallah. How are your children? How is the family? If there is any way I can help you, please let me know. Sometimes there is something you can assist. You can go and help. Why not? They will be stunned. One day they will come. So recently I faced, we faced many challenges. Recently there was another one. People created a huge thing out of something minor. And so what happened is, someone decided to swear me in public. Swear me. In person. I was just walking and they started to say things. I just smiled because with me was a very important people. And I just smiled and I carried on. Because you know what? My brother, I work for Allah, not for you. That's it. Another thing is, you know, my bread is not buttered neither by you nor by anyone. <laughs> That's another thing. So what, no matter what you say, it goes to show who you are, not me. Next day, I had an opportunity to meet the same man again. I, I grabbed his hand, Salaamu Alaikum, how are you? I said, you know what? May Allah grant you goodness. I want to tell you 10 years from today, you will regret what you did. That's all I want to say. You know why? All of us, when we are young, we have energy. We, we don't want to accommodate. It's me and I want to do this and that. As you grow older, you realize it's not just me. I have children, they need to get married. 
I have people, I have a community, I need to serve the community. I have so much happening, and things need to come. I am not, we are together. We were, if there are struggles, we struggle together. If there is some goodness, we are enjoying Eid and whatever it is together. We are a people, when something is being distributed, they will remember us. I'm giving you a Zimbabwean example. Because you know how the struggles have been on for decades right now for us. And mashallah, look at us. Some of, some of us, mashallah, we are struggling more than others, right or wrong. But we sit together and alhamdulillah, we try our best. No one knows. We pray for each other. So I told the brother, 10 years from today, you will regret what you have said. And long discussion. And I guarantee you, by the will of Allah, if Allah wants goodness, Allah always softens the hearts of the people. خَيْرٌ nasi and فَعُهُمْ nasi. The best of the people are those who are the most beneficial to the rest of the people. Help people. When we become selfish, we won't reach anywhere. Look at others and tell yourself, what can I give this person? I can give them something. Maybe dua at least. And you know what? I learned something. When Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about character. And when Aisha radiallahu anha says, كَانَ خُلُوقُهُ Quran. He was, his akhlaq is an embodiment of the Qur'an. Wallahi, that makes a huge difference in da'wah and in your teaching and as an imam. When your character is beautiful, when you talk to the people with respect, you automatically have your own respect. Your own respect. But when you don't respect people, you as an imam, you can joke and laugh, but with the right people. And there must be a limit to your jokes. They should not become X-rated and XX-rated. Even though you might just be sitting with young boys and you think, ah, oh, we are just joking. They will lose respect for you. Behind the scenes, they will lose respect. Make yourself, yes, we can laugh, but there is a limit to the laughter. Make yourself, yes, we can spend time, we can laugh and joke, but there is a limit to those jokes. Your character must outshine everyone. Speak with respect and clearly to everyone. Go and be there and help and assist wherever possible, wherever needed, depending on where you are based, how many imams there are, what is the job exactly, and we need to do more than that. Why not? So, you know, as we progress in life, we will face challenge upon challenge because Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was imam of imams. He was the leader of all. He was Sayyidul Anbiya, the leader of Anbiya. Look at the challenges he went through. They accused him. They said bad things about him. They tried hard. What happened? After he passed on and things started to spread. Today we are billions on earth following a man who didn't even have the, a sound speaker that we had here, but his voice reached further than anything that I could allow mine to reach, then mine could or yours. People follow and they will follow. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, to be able to assist and to help is very interesting. To develop your character will empower you. People want to listen to you. Have a good expression on your face. I always like to smile. The reason is, it's a sunnah. Another reason is, when you have a pleasant look about yourself, People will automatically want to listen to you. Imagine someone comes up in Jumu'ah and they are just frowning. And they say, Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu. People will want to go away. What is this brother going to say? And then some people, they scream at you, they shout at you. Yes, there are times when you need to raise your voice, by all means. There are times when you need to use words that are a little bit hard. But those are times I like to draw cue from Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Mu'adh ibn, Yaman, ibn Jabal to where? To Yemen. And he told them, Bashira wala tunafira. Give good news to the people. Don't chase them away from the deal. Good news. What is good news? Allah is merciful. Allah is great. Allah will forgive your shortcomings. Turn to Allah. Allah is Ra'uf, Allah is Rahim. Here is the deen. Allah will grant you Jannah when you do this, when you do that. You don't start off by saying something which will chase them away. There was a brother who wanted to accept Islam. So he said, can I accept Islam? They said, yes. He accepted Islam. They told him, you need to cut. You need to cut what? You need to cut what? Circumcision. They said, you must slot. He was scared. He said, no, I can't. They said, no, you have to. We put you. You come. 
We, we need to, you must, seven days. Where did they get this from that seven days you need to slice? So the brother says, hey, that's rough. I can't do it. I'm old man. What's going to happen? He was scared. You know how scared they get? That is his pride. They want to chop it. So he said, no, 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 no. It's very hard. They said, no, we, you have to. We will take you by force. He said, no, then I want to leave Islam. He said, they said, if you leave, we will chop your head. Never mind that. So he was, ah, what kind of religion is this? I enter, you want to chop. I exit, you want to chop. What, do you want? what is it? That shows people are confused. You see, people are what? They are confused. May Allah Almighty make it easy. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.